uh, I will start with a really short and fast retrospective on my, on my career because right now I'm doing documentation and Derbel stuff for, for Storyblock. But like more than a decade ago, I was working for marketing agencies uh, on, on a lot of different type of, of websites. Some of them were landing pages. Actually, my first project was the Microsoft Windows 8 launch landing page. Uh, that's how you can tell that I'm really old. And uh, also, did, like brand guidelines, promotional and movie sites. Some, some of these movies were like really well known. Uh, can mention right now, but after the talk, you can come and ask me. And probably my favorite one were, were like social initiative programs. These sites were super different visually and on design, but on the bare bones, they were actually quite similar. And we were doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, these experiences were really scrolling immersive sites. You would get like full height panels. And when you scroll, uh, you would get these kind of indicators because you could never see below the fold that there was more content to be explored. So we, we always have this kind of like helping CTAs. And we would have like scroll snapping. So you would actually never see this. Every time that you try to scroll, we would stop that, hijack, and, and show you the, the next pa uh, panel. And then when the panel became visible, we would run some animation, even some videos of WebGL scenes. Um, this was not the only thing that these sites had in common. Uh, they were also full of hacks. We were actually like twisting the arm of all the browsers. We were trying to do stuff that, that wasn't actually possible with the native web. And uh, the code was really hard to maintain because of these hacks were accumulating over and over again. Uh, we were adding bunch of code. Remember these sites had like really heavy assets, images, videos. So on top of that, a lot of code, super. You have to wait a lot on a mobile network to actually uh, see the sites. And even after you loaded everything, the performance was actually uh, quite bad because it was full of hacks. And I kept reflecting a lot how much CSS and the web APIs have improved on the past five years, maybe, and, and how much uh, I would have loved to have like the new CSS, but like 10 years ago. So this talk is about, is about this feeling of the, of the new defaults of the modern web that would allow me to build these sites uh, in, in a better way, um, super fast, because this is a landing talk and I don't have a lot of time. That's my name, that's what I do, that's where I live, that's my face. And that's me on Blue Sky, and that's my blog. Well, let's cut to the chase. Uh, first problem, we wanted full height panels on each section. Uh, in desktop, of course, it's like, like super easy, but the problem were mobile, actually. And mobile, you have this kind of like browser UI elements that would get into the way that would modify the, uh, the height of the, um, of the viewport. And sometimes these UI elements would cover uh, important information. Some of them were like these CTAs to scroll. And um, so this was not a detail that we could overlook. So we found out that uh, our users on mobile will like rest their thumb uh, on their screen while waiting. I think that everybody does that. And so we created this hack where we, on touch start, we would uh, recalculate the height of all the panes. And then we, we would actually remove um, the, the event listener. The problem is that the user might not do that. We think that they might do that, but they might actually rotate, scroll. So we had to do that for all the events, uh, which was not cool. And I didn't like it. I need to be honest, it worked. <laughs> but it, it, didn't, it, didn't, it, didn't feel right. it didn't feel right. Um, so yeah, that is now one line of CSS. It's just that. Uh, that's if you don't know that unit, that's like DVH, that's dynamic viewport height, and that unit uh, adapts when somebody uh, uh, with something actually this kind of like UI elements from the browsers actually cover part of the part of the viewport, uh, and that's cool. That's not ha not hacking. That's di dynamic viewport units. That's the name of the of the API. A scroll animation, as I mentioned, we had this kind of CTAs that you would click or tap. And then next uh, panel would scroll. Um, of course, there's no native option for that 10 years ago. So what we would do is that we would access to the offset top of the next pane that we wanted to, to show. We would get the scroll container, and we would, uh, with a library, animate the scroll top property of this container. Issues, every time that you access these kind of properties, like offset top, you would trigger a uh, layout recalculation on the browser, not cool. And also animating scroll top, like it's not GPU accelerated, so the performance was like uh, actually quite bad. Um, right now, super simple. You can just use a scrolling to view 
to the to the balance it's actually super all APIs present in Internet Explorer. But the main difference is that now we have scroll behavior on CSS, which just with one line on the scroll container, you get this done. And that is the scroll behavior. Next thing, scroll snapping, the thing that I mentioned that would never happen in these projects is this kind of like half of one panel and the other half in one panel, we will block you every time that we did you wanted to scroll. And the way that we did that was, guess, a hack. We would um, detect when you were trying to scroll, we would prevent default. So actually not scroll what happening, but we will still get the coordinates of that event. And we would calculate the direction of that. We would get, which is a current pane, call a function, and we would animate that pane out and the next one in. Um, yeah, again, not cool because I can tell you that the main thing was not performance here maybe, but breaking the browser like native scrolling inertia didn't feel right in UX. Some sites even do that today, I don't know. Um, so not cool. The solution, scroll snap as a CSS API. Two lines, basically you set the type on the container and then the, the align one on the, on the pane and you got it done. That's just no JavaScript. This is probably my favorite CSS API. So, so powerful in just two lines. It's amazing. Scroll interception. I told you that we wanted to animate some stuff every time that a new panel comes in. Um, so, yeah, no native option 10 years ago. So, when we wanted to uh, intercept that panel, we needed to listen to scroll. And every time that you scroll, we would uh, get the offset top again. Uh, and we would get the current pane given that position. And after that position, we run some animations. And after that animations, we need to clean stuff up. This is because performance was such a problem that we will like remove some assets, stop some animations on other panes that were not active. Um, yeah, it still didn't work, honestly. When you had like some panels off screen, like, I don't know, running some WebGL or some videos, it was really quite, actually quite tricky. And right now, you have the intersection observer uh, API. And that's super simple because you just check if the panel is intersecting, you run the animations, and for a super easy performance gain, you just can unobserve the target. Uh, cool, intersection observer. That's actually quite old, so it's person in all browsers. Web animations, as I told you, every time that we intercepted one of these panels, we wanted to animate pretty much everything that was inside it because we were really into motion design. And specifically, we were doing complex animation flows, so we wanted promise-based uh, animations. We didn't have that. There were actually great animation libraries. There was GreenSock, which was one of my favorites at that time, but it had no promises. It was all callbacks, and it was actually quite hard when you needed to animate, I don't know, more than seven elements, and these animations were actually quite, um, quite convoluted. So for animations, yeah, we created our own uh, promise wrapper for, for GreenSock, which added a lot of code on top of the other code that we had. So we didn't like it. And right now, you have an animate function for each HTML element. You just grab the HTML element, call that animate, pass an array of transforms that you want to do. And the most interesting thing is that this returns an animation object. And that animation object has a finished promise. You can await and await and await and await. And that's actually all promise all for if you want concurrent animations. That's super cool, that's just one line. Amazing, uh, web animation API. And the last thing that I'm gonna talk about today is view transitions. You might have heard of it because it's actually quite new. It's only on, on Chrome and, and Chromium. But the main thing is that just for this thing, we had to use a framework. I'm not against frameworks, but these like, projects were not hard to build uh, because of the web application feature, but because of these hacks. But then on top of that, we had to actually use a framework just to use this transition and animate the page when they were like swapping and revealing. And right now you have a view transition API available for you. Uh, so that's quite cool. And the result is actually a web like this. Just like fully animated, super controlled scrolling. You can see how the elements flush in, super nice. You can see it feels natural because this is actually the browser scroll inertia. I'm not hijacking anything here. Um, this is not a video or, or, or nothing. This is actually an application. It exists. You can QR, scan that QR code and, or just write that uh, web URL. And also the code is available um, on GitHub. You can also scan that QR code. 
and get the and get the code. Like actually, it's super simple. Literally, like uh, 20 I don't know 30 lines of code for both CSS and JavaScript. And that's it. Thank you so much.